Well, if you've never been on a celebrity cruise before, you might not know that the food is one of the best parts of a celebrity cruise. I think celebrity cruises has some of the best food at sea. However, recently I was heading out to the celebrity solstice and I was reading some things online about the food on celebrity cruises that were quite disturbing. I didn't really know what to expect. It seemed that celebrity had made some changes with their dining, with the dining options, food wasn't as good on their ships. And so I had to check it out for myself. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about the dining on board Celebrity Souls. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion about all the food I had on board the ship. I'm gonna walk it day by day throughout the cruise and tell you exactly what I had, show you pictures and videos of it, and give you my thoughts. Hello everyone, my name is Zach. I am The Traveling Man, and this is my official dining review of all the food available on board the Celebrity Solstice. Well, this cruise on board Celebrity Solstice was my seventh cruise with Celebrity Cruises. And like I said, I love the food on Celebrity Cruises. I think they have the best food at sea, at least that I've had so far. I'm still exploring new cruise lines all the time, uh, but I've always been extremely satisfied with all of the offerings of the food from their specialty restaurants, which are the best at sea in my opinion, uh, to the Ocean View Cafe, which is the buffet on board, to even the coffee shop and the pastries that they serve there. Just everything has always been so good. And like I said, before I went on this cruise, I had heard a lot of people talking online. Some people had sailed over the holidays, some people had sailed into the new year and were like, the food is just, something's off. So of course I had to go and find out for myself. And I ate at many dining venues on board the ship. I was actually a part of Aqua Class. And with Celebrity, if you have Aqua Class, that's sort of their spa class you actually get exclusive dining privileges at Blue Restaurant. Blue Restaurant serves more lighter fare, healthier fare, but it's so good. It's one of my favorite dining venues on board Celebrity. I've been fortunate to be able to stay in Aqua Class a few times before this selling on Celebrity Salsa, so I knew what to expect. And in fact, most of the time I am booking Aqua Clash just so I get to go to Blue Restaurant. It's that good. I also took advantage of a couple of specialty dining opportunities on board and I got to eat in Lumine. Lumine is the restaurant exclusive to those guests staying in suites. So I was able to go there one night too. So I'm gonna tell you all about it in this review and let's just get right underway. We're gonna start with day number one on the ship. I boarded the ship and immediately went to Ocean View Cafe and had some really good nachos. They have fantastic nachos and that tends to be my embarkation day treat. I usually always gravitate toward those nachos and they have all sorts of toppings you can put on there, but a great selection, a great welcome on boarding day when you get to go to the Ocean View Cafe for the first time and they had a great selection. And the first evening of the cruise, I started off on a high note because I went to specialty dining and I tried out Le Petit Chef. Now, I had tried Le Petit before. I tried it on Celebrity Apex, loved it. That was the first celebrity cruise that I took but really loved it on Celebrity Apex. Tried it last year on Celebrity Equinox and it was just okay. It wasn't as good as Apex. Uh, and then I tried it again for a third time on Celebrity Solstice. And I can't say that the experience was any better than what I had on Equinox. It was just okay. First of all, I think they were using a different menu this time. And how Le Petit works is it's sort of a very interactive dinner. You know, there's like an overhead projector and it shines down on the table. And they play this little film of the Le Petit Chef and he comes out and he like prepares each of the meals. And each of the things that he is preparing in the little video is then what they bring you and set down on your plate. So it's a fixed menu. And since the menu is set, if you don't like the primary menu, there is a secondary menu that you can get if you like those offerings different or if you just have dietary restrictions or anything like that. But typically on Equinox and Apex when I ate at Le Petit, uh, the video aligned with the food that you actually were being presented once that particular segment of video ended. However, it wasn't the case here on board Celebrity Solstice. The video did not align with what we were actually eating and what we were actually getting from the menu. So that was very odd. Uh, I think the experience is a lot better when Le Petit Chef is actually running around your plate preparing what you're about to eat and be presented by the wait staff. So that was very odd to me. Another thing that I don't particularly care for, I guess, with Le Petit is the late start time because it is a timed experience. You know, they're playing this little video and as soon as the video is over, they're setting down your food. So everything has to be coordinated and timed just right so that everyone's receiving their food and everyone's seeing the same video at the same time. So they give people about 15 to 20 minutes after the scheduled start time before they even start serving any type of food. I like to keep things on schedule, you know, because it's a busy evening. I have dinner at 7.30 and I might have a show at nine o'clock. We need to keep it pushing. And uh, the night that I went, they actually 
because they didn't start till 15 or 20 minutes after they were supposed to, uh, it got, I think, about 8.55 or so, and I got real antsy because I had a 9 o'clock show, and I got up to leave, and they are like, oh, you haven't finished the, you know, there's another scene here to see, and I was like, no, I'm done. I, I've got to go to the show. So just keep that in mind that it might be posted that it starts at 7.30. Please show up on time so they can get started as soon as they can. But they do tend to wait on everyone getting there before they can actually start the experience. And that's because the wait staff has to come over and see if there's any dietary restrictions and sort of talk to you about the menu and see if there's any replacements, what menu you even want. So uh, it can be a lot of time up front that you're just going to be sitting there waiting. Another thing I noticed was that the sommelier service was a little slow in here as well. So... Not the best dining experience. And the meal started off with a tartlet of slow roasted heirloom tomatoes. And this was pretty good. It was a quite a refreshing starter. And then the second course was a little salad, a poached shrimp and Persian cucumber salad. And that was just okay as well. That was nothing to write home about. But the main entree was really where they came up this speed. We really got moving with that main entree because this was a braised short rib of beef. So this was just like a beef tenderloin. It was so good. It was so tender. It had just had so much flavor. I really enjoyed it. The highlight of the meal for me and one of several beef tenderloin, uh, beef short rib moments that I would have over the course of this cruise. But that was a really good entree. But I didn't really care for the starter or the salad courses. I feel like those could have been much better. And the meal ended with a dessert, a little strawberry dessert that you see there, and that was very tasty as well. And before I knew it, the experience was over and I was off to my show at nine o'clock and I barely made it. Again, it didn't really end on time because, well, we didn't really start on time. So I guess overall my review for Le Petit Chef would be if you've never been before and you want to experience it, because it isn't your typical specialty dining opportunity, it is quite unique. If you've never done it before, I would say try it once. Um, it's a great experience, but other than that, I think if you go back, each time I've gone back, I've been disappointed. So nothing's comparing to the first time I went to Le Petit, so I think I might just should lay off in my future celebrity cruises and not go again. Um, but go at least once and see what you think, because it is a cool experience to try. So the second night of the cruise was an elegant night, and that meant I was in my main dining room, and of course, because I'm aqua class, my main dining room was Blue Restaurant. I love Blue Restaurant, as I said earlier, and I always enjoy eating in there. And this night I started off with the heirloom tomato salad and unlike the heirloom tomato salad I had the night before in Le Petit Chef, I absolutely love this one. It was so good. It was one of those appetizers that you might want to ask seconds for and say, hey, can I have another one of these? For my main entree that night, I had the miso maple glazed baked salmon and this was a great option for my main. And then to finish off the meal, I had a dessert of chilled strawberry soup and this was okay. Uh, I was trying to you know, fit in some healthier options where I could and not always get cake or some very confectionate dessert each night of the cruise. So this was sort of me trying to go a little bit healthier uh, and it was just okay. Now, in addition to serving dinner, Blue Restaurant also serves breakfast. They're open for breakfast and dinner each day. However, I only tried breakfast in Blue one time this cruise and that's because of the service that I experienced. I went in that first morning and I sat down at the table uh, and, and really no one ever came over to wait on me. No one ever came to get my order. They, of course, there's a menu on the table when you get there. So I was just looking over it, waiting. Someone finally came over and brought me coffee. And when they were pouring it, they spilled like half of it on the table. And I sat there for a good, probably 10 or 15 minutes before anyone ever came back to the table. And actually the table next to me, they finally were like, hey, is anyone gonna come, you know, wait on you? Has anyone, uh, you know, been back? I was like, no, I don't know why they're ignoring me. You know, there were even tables sat on the other side of me after I sat down and their order was already been taken, and they got their food before they ever came and took my order. Finally, someone came over and took my order, and service was okay after that, but I just feel like for the extra money that you pay to be in aqua class, and for what Blue Restaurant is supposed to be, the service could be a little bit better. I'm paying a premium price to be in aqua class so that I can eat at Blue Restaurant, you know, uh, give, make sure that breakfast service is good, okay? Because of that, I never returned to Blue Restaurant for breakfast, mainly because I also had access to the Captain's Club breakfast, and the Captain's Club breakfast is for those guests that are elite and above in Celebrities Captain's Club. Captain's Club is the loyalty program of Celebrity Cruises, and I was able to go to the Captain's Club breakfast. That was located in Tuscan Grill. Tuscan Grill is on the very back of the ship on deck five. It is also a specialty restaurant in the evenings, and one of my favorites actually. I wasn't able to dine there this cruise, but I really enjoy Tuscan Grill. It's in a beautiful location, but they do have Captain's Club breakfast there each morning. It's located right beside Blue Restaurant. 
Another complaint of mine was that Blue Restaurant closes at 9 a.m. So if you're on a sea day and you're trying to sleep in a little bit, you're going to maybe miss going to Blue Restaurant. I think it closes a little too early, uh, at least for me. And so some mornings I would get up and not actually have time to go to Blue Restaurant, even if I wanted to. So Captain's Club was open a little bit later. So I would go to the Captain's Club breakfast and I always enjoyed it. In addition to the stunning views that you have there on the back of the ship, you also have a great selection of different smoothies. There's all different types of breakfast, danishes and bagels. And you can see I had the ultimate platter that had a little bit of everything included with it, some fruit. So I always enjoyed, I went several days throughout the course of the cruise to the Captain's Club breakfast and really enjoyed that. So again, if you're elite or above in the loyalty program with Celebrity Cruises, make sure you check out that Captain's Club breakfast. Everything is free. You don't have to pay for anything. There's even some specialty drinks and specialty coffees on the menu. You don't have to pay for those or use your beverage package for those. Those are all included. And it's just a part of Celebrity's loyalty to their loyal guests. So the next night of the cruise, I was back in Blue Restaurant and this time, I started off with probably the favorite appetizer of the entire cruise. I really enjoyed this Maine Lobster salad. It had this really almost kind of like sweet glaze on it. It was just very good. The noodles were good. The lobster in it was good. So good that when I finished my first plate, I guess I ate it very fast because the server was like, oh, would you like another one? And I was like, absolutely, bring me another one. So I actually enjoyed two and I thoroughly enjoyed both of those. For my main entree that night, I enjoyed the slow roasted short ribs and those were very good as well. It served with some bread there on the side that was toasted just perfectly. And then for my dessert, I enjoyed some panna cotta with fruit on top and that was delicious as well. So the next night of the cruise was my second specialty dining night and this time I went to Murano and I had eaten at Murano when I sailed on Celebrity Equinox and I had really enjoyed it. The food was fantastic. They have the Murano lobster, which is so popular. And I rem had remembered how good that was and I knew I wanted to try Murano again. And I'm so glad I did. Even better than the food in Murano was the service. I had some of the best service that I probably ever had in any dining venue on any cruise ship in here. My wait staff was so good. They were so attentive. They took time. The cool thing about Murano is they bring most of your main entrees and sometimes even the dessert to the table. They actually do an element of cooking there at the table to finish off your entree and it's so cool. Uh, and as my waiter was doing that, he was telling me about everything. He was telling me why they put in this spice or why they put in this element uh, and just explaining how the flavors work together. And it was just so awesome. I enjoy food, I enjoy cooking. So it was just really neat to have that table side experience. He said he had worked in Murano aboard celebrity cruise ships for the past like 10 or 15 years. So he really knew what he was talking about. And I even asked him, I was like, well, what's the most popular entree? And he was like, well, of course it's the Murano lobster, which I had and we'll see in just a minute. But I started off the meal with the Wild Forest Mushroom Cappuccino. And this was just like a mushroom soup a very savory soup and too rich to be the first course of this pretty big meal. So I did enjoy it, but uh, it was just too much for me to finish. For my salad course of the meal, I went with, well, another heirloom tomato salad. This one was the heirloom tomato and buffalo mozzarella salad. And this was delicious. This had apples and cantaloupe. It had basil. It was really good and I highly recommend it if you're going to Murano to try that as your salad. And for my main, of course, I had to have the famous Murano lobster. This is what I'd also had uh, the first time I ever went to Murano on the Equinox. And so I had had this sort of inner dialogue with myself and I'm like, no, maybe I should get something different because I got that last time. But ultimately when it came to it, I just had to get the Murano lobster again and I was not disappointed. It's a fantastic dish and I would recommend you go to Murano and pay the $60 cover charge just to eat the Murano lobster, it's absolutely worth it. And for dessert, I had a souffle and that was delicious as well. And I can't say enough good things about my experience in Murano. Would absolutely go back and will go back. And I will say that Murano is only on the Solstice class and I think the Millennium class ships also. It's not on the Edge class ships. So if you're selling on one of the order ships, make sure you try it out at least once because I promise you'll enjoy the experience. The service is great and the food is incredible. And speaking of great meals, the next night of the cruise, I was able to eat at Lumine, thanks to some great friends that I was traveling with. Now, Lumine is exclusive to those guests staying in suites, or the retreat as celebrity calls it. So if you're staying in the retreat, you can dine at Lumine. And I will say, Lumine is fantastic. Unfortunately, I don't have any pictures or videos from that evening, but I will say that I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had another entree of beef short ribs, so that was sort of the theme for the cruise, I think, but it was a fantastic meal at Lumine. So if you've never been to Lumine, Make sure you book into the retreat sometime so that you can dine in there. It's always a fantastic experience with some of the best service, 
that you'll find anywhere at sea. Well, the next night of the cruise, they sent me packing back to Blue Restaurant. They said, get back out, get out of Luna, get back to your main dining restaurant. So always happy to be in Blue Restaurant though. And this night of the cruise was Lobster Night. And Lobster Night is always the second to last night on Celebrity Cruises. And this time it was a little bit different. Like I said, there were a lot of changes that have been made recently by Celebrity Cruises. And one of them is an implementation of a $16.95 plus 18% gratuity for additional lobster tails in the main dining room. Of course, with the cost of lobster now over $20, not worth it in my opinion uh, for the lobster that they serve. However, I was very curious if this also applied to Blue Restaurant. So I got there that night. I got my appetizer, my Blue Caesar salad. Then of course for my entree, I had to get the lobster tail and I asked my server I said hey I know there's this new charge with additional lobster tails does that apply in blue restaurant and he said no you can get as many as you want in blue restaurant that only applies in the main dining room however when I released my celebrity sources cruise review and if you haven't seen that cruise review make sure you go back and watch it because I talk all about the cruise ship entertainment the food all the ports we visited so make sure you go back and check that out but someone had commented and said they were recently on a celebrity cruise where they were charged for additional lobster tail in blue restaurants so it might vary or depend on ship uh, but for the most part i don't think that folks dining in blue restaurant incur that additional charge for additional lobster tails but let me know down in the comments what your experience been recently in blue restaurant with additional lobster tails and then i finished up the meal that night with the celebrity signature baked alaska baked alaska was something new to me that i'd only tried my last cruise or two and i really enjoy it so if you've ever slept on baked alaska and just think I don't want that, that doesn't sound appealing to me. I always thought that, I always saw folks getting it for their dessert, but once I tried it, I'm hooked and it's always so good. Uh, so make sure you get the Baked Alaska when it's offered on board your next cruise. And then of course, the final night of the cruise, I was back in Blue Restaurant because I do love Blue Restaurant so much. I started off that meal with the seafood ceviche. That was very good and refreshing. And then for my main, I tried the baked salmon. That was very good as well. And then I wanted to try a little something different. So I got a second entree. This is one of the vegetarian options. This was the cauliflower steak. Didn't really know what to expect, but I did enjoy that also. That was really good. It was very well spiced, very well flavored. Something I absolutely would try again, but I'm glad that I you know, got out of my comfort zone and tried something new. It was just cauliflower. It wasn't like I was eating uh, anything exotic, but it was a really good dish and I really enjoyed it. Great wait staff in there, great maitre d' and hostesses in there really enjoyed it and it's always worth the additional cost for aqua class just to dine in blue restaurant in my opinion one of the best venues you can dine at on a celebrity cruise so now that covers all of my dinners that i had on board the ship i did want to mention another dining venue or two just to cover it uh, the first of those being cafe al bacho cafe al bacho is amazing that's the coffee shop on board all celebrity cruise ships and they have fantastic places to sit specifically on the solstice you could sit just they're on deck five, so you're just right up above the grand foyer, so you can take a seat and look down and see all the activities going on there in the grand foyer. Uh, they do have a wait staff in there, so if you do just want to go in and take a seat, someone can come and get your order. They also have a great selection of pastries. All the pastries and cookies and everything you see in the display case there are all included. And I mean, their coffee is on the level, if not even better than like a Starbucks or other specialty coffee restaurant. And I think all their coffees and teas and all the selections they have are included in the classic and the premium beverage packages. So a great place to get coffee, a great place to start your day, or just get that pick me up in the middle of the day. Whatever you need, they got it for you at Cafe Al Bacho. And then of course there's Ocean View Cafe or the main buffet on board the ship. And I dined here quite a bit throughout the course of the cruise for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then late night pizza. And we'll start with that late night pizza because that closes at 1 a.m. And I really have a bone to pick here because you know, some nights you might be up later, you might wake up hungry or you might just be out hanging out with friends and want a slice of pizza at 1.30 a.m. That pizza is gone at 1.01. So if you stumble in there at 1.01 or 1.05, there's not gonna be any pizza left. So make sure you're in there before and celebrity, if you're listening, I would like to urge you to consider extending the hours that you serve pizza. I know it's offered from early in the morning to 1 a.m., but if you're trying to go for a younger demographic on your ship and you're trying to invite them on board, especially with the Celebrity Edge series of ships, you're going to have to make more food available during the overnight hours because there's nothing. Once that pizza closes at 1 a.m., there's nothing else that you can just walk up and grab on board the ship and, and dine on. There's no food available 
other than room service. And there are additional charges, which we'll talk about in just a minute for room service now. So uh, it could be costly if you want to have something to eat on a celebrity cruise ship between the hours of like 1 a.m. and 6 a.m. It's gonna cost you. But the Ocean View Cafe is fantastic. And I really tried to keep aware in the Ocean View Cafe because this is where a lot of folks were saying online, I'd read a lot of comments, folks are like, I just sold this ship and the Ocean View Cafe, there were no offerings. The food they did have was bad quality. So I tried to keep extra aware on this cruise and to see you know, what food they had available during what times of the day. And I'm happy to report that I saw no shortages of food in Ocean View Cafe. Every time I went in there for breakfast, lunch, dinner, there was always plenty of food stations, uh, plenty of options for breakfast. I think they're open from like 6 a.m. to like 11.30 some days. So if you wake up too late to go to Blue or the main dining room for breakfast, you can go up to Ocean View Cafe. They'll open up again from about 2 to 2.30 or 3 for lunch offerings. And then about 3 or 4, they'll actually lay out some snacks, little sandwiches and handhelds like that to hold you over till dinner, which usually runs from about 5 to 9 or 10 in the evening. And then, of course, they have pizza to 1 a.m. So always plenty of food. I did notice in dinner a couple of times, even though I never had dinner in there, I did walk up there a couple of times just to see what they had. There was always plenty of stations open. They always had an international station every night. So plenty of options for you in the Ocean View Cafe, don't you worry. And that brings us, of course, to the last item, which is room service charges. And beginning at the very beginning of 2023, I believe, Celebrity implemented a room service charge pretty much uh, no matter what time of the day you're dining, you're now going to pay. I think previously there might have been like a $5.95 charge overnight. But now no matter what time of day, if you want room service other than continental breakfast, there are a few offerings in the morning like you know, maybe you want coffee and some pastries or danishes or something very light like that. Think very continental. Well, those items don't incur a charge. However, just about anything else, they actually have premium breakfast items like eggs and waffles and things like that. Those do, $9.95 plus 18% gratuity, which puts the cost of a room service delivery to your room north of $10. So basically, if you're staying in any stateroom that's not a suite on board a celebrity cruise ship, you are gonna have to pay $9.95 plus gratuity for any room service delivery that's not continental breakfast. So just keep that in mind. That is a change that is real. I don't like it. I know no one likes it, but it is what it is, right? And because of that, I did not have any room service delivery, did not try any room service this cruise because I refused to pay that much for room service when there's so much fantastic food to be found all around the ship. And so that covers all of the dining that I had on board the Celebrity Solstice, just fantastic food all around the ship and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now I will put it to the test because I am gonna be trying out different cruise lines coming up very soon. So make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button so that you can see my adventures on those cruise ships, including food reviews just like this. We'll see if the food holds up on other cruise lines, but Celebrity, of all of my cruise experiences to date has the best food and I highly recommend them because of that. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please go down below, give me a thumbs up. It does help out my channel. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure. <music>